Welcome. Oh, there we go. Hi, hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's live stream. We are so excited to have everyone here at the moment, especially when a lot of us can't be together um, in our workplaces and having fun together. So we're really excited to have this online platform to be able to still hear from some amazing people who are working in the games industry and hear what they're up to. So we've got Mitch on tonight, uh, and we're so excited to hear what he has to say um, and everything else as well. So we're just going to get started so I'm going to hand it over to Steph it's her first live stream so we're really excited to have Steph joining us now um, if you've got any questions remember to put them in the chat we're going to be asking them throughout the stream live as well um, so take it away Steph thank you all right so thank you for joining us Mitchell super exciting to no hear worries. what you've been up to um, so I guess we'll get straight into it. Um, my first question would be, um, did you always know that you wanted to pursue a career in games? Was there something else that you were thinking? It's a weird journey, I'll be honest, Steph. It was, um, I originally started uh, with the idea that I wanted to go into photography, right? So I was already into the whole digital world to begin with. And then this tangent uh, going through learning new languages and then wanting to uh, pursue a career in teaching uh, these languages and arts. And one day in uni, I kind of thought to myself, like, yeah, I don't really want to learn about war statistics. Um, let's just completely jump off that. And ever since I was three, I was playing video games for a living. And like, I just thought, you know what, let's, let's make my hobby my dream job. And yeah, yeah so I guess it's only come to occurrence in the last maybe two years wow that's really impressive learning languages all that kind of stuff and into games and so i guess going back to when you're growing up what kind of games were you playing uh I, man it was i was a ps1 kind of boy from yeah. uh, from way back then so it was definitely um i'm not sure if you remember it was the uh the rugrats game for playstation <laughs> one um but not only that crash bandicoot three none of the others just number three yeah. um if anyone was to call me right now that's my ringtone that's my go-to um <laughs> when lockdown comes back down I'm, I'm planning to get a tattoo at some point just to get that imprinted on me it's it's a big uh childhood memory of mine yeah so, i definitely yeah. remember playing crash bandicoot as a kid amazing and so what kind of games are you playing now oh man you name it, it it's um I usually go for a more multiplayer based style. So anything from League of Legends or um, Valorant or um, even some story games like Detroit Become Human. Um, those real life decision uh, games are a couple of my favorite. Like it, it's a really, really cool um, experience to have from them. So yeah, it's those games in particular. Yeah, awesome. And I guess, can you just tell us a little bit about your career in games up until now? I know you were just saying it was completely unplanned, but yeah, do you want to tell us about your journey? Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I haven't really had too much of a background in terms of um, my gaming career. Um, in terms of uh, working in the industry, Epiphany Games, where I'm working at right now, um, I've only been with them uh, for the past eight months. I joined them back last year in December. Um, only two days uh, after we finished off at AIE, um, wow. me and, uh, and three other uh, students, we got offered by uh, our project lead at the company um, to come on board. And I was very, very lucky to have um, one of my mentors at uh, the AIE Sydney campus um choose me for uh that role which i'm now fulfilling as the junior level designer which is really really cool yeah that's awesome and i guess for people who maybe aren't sure what a level designer is or i guess a junior level designer do you want to explain to everyone like, what exactly that is yeah no so a level designer um to quite frankly it's what it's like right it's <laughs> one of it's you're making the level but more in depth you're looking at the psychology of the player the choices that they make going into a level uh you're also looking at the uh architectural context about the world that this game is set in 
um, having a deepened understanding as to um, how the player should be interacting with items uh, in that game or with the world itself. Um, so all of that combined, level design is um, making a space ready for the player to move around freely, to not be confused and to become immersed in the world in which we want to make. Yeah, awesome. And what kind of programs are you using at Epiphany? So at the moment we are using Unity Engine to yep. uh, build Tiny Troopers Global Ops. Um, mainly specifically, I'm not using any other application other than Unity, just because all the tools are made by the lead programmer of the company. Um, he's developed all the systems that I need in order to grey box to pump out everything that's required for this job. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, Unity is the main engine that we're using there. Yeah, and then, um, so we do teach Unity as part of our courses, which is probably where you were using that quite a bit. Had you had any sort of use of Unity before that, or you learned it all at AIE? It was absolutely fresh. Um, I yeah. think the only experience that I had was uh, during my work experience with AIE uh, back in 2015. And, yeah. um only then I just touched it briefly and then, you know, it's a human nature to forget a couple of things over the years, right? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so come about two years later, my brain went completely blank and then um, 2019 comes around and Unity knowledge just snaps right back into place. So yeah. yeah, other than that, AIE taught me the basics. Yeah, right. And so you were talking about your position at Epiphany and a little bit how about how you got it. Um, do you want to explain a bit more what the process was like in case, you know, there's someone out there thinking, hey, that's a really interesting position. I would love to be doing that. Um, yeah, so a bit of info on that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, at the beginning, we were all recruited really as uh, junior game designers. Uh, none of us really expected us to be specialised in certain fields. Um, another student of AIA is still working with me um, at Epiphany and she has a designated position as a level dresser, um, which goes into the more aesthetic um, focus. But um, the process in which it happened, um, it's really, uh, the for me personally, it was my dedication to my work and making sure that um, I did everything that was best for my portfolio um, every single day that I could on campus. And not only that, building a solid relationship with my mentor and my peers, um, which overall got me recognized as a good candidate to work with in the industry. So really, um, it's your, not only your profile, but what you produce and your work ethic that goes into being recognized to, you know, being given these opportunities. Yeah, super important and very impressive. You've done well to get where you are, so congratulations. So Thank I guess you. looking at an average day at Epiphany Games, what does that look like for you? Is there an average day? So every day is different, and I think I've been saying it ever since I joined there. Um, a day will consist of um, me going in and creating a new level, meaning grabbing out my trusty book. Oh. Um, <laughs> sketching little uh, layouts of possible levels um, like uh, terrain layouts or um, just pathways in which uh, the player can go. And then after I make the basic uh, model of it, then I'll start creating it in Unity. And then um, when the team thinks that it's satisfactory, we then pass it off to uh, my associate being the other student and she will dress it and then we'll have the next pass come through and rinse repeat for the new levels coming behind me. Yeah. Awesome. And you were talking a lot about player psychology and how important that is in game design. Did you realize that before you got into games and had that as a career option or you had no idea how much was involved? Absolutely not. I think um, going straight into it, I really underestimated um, the amount of psychology that went into um, predicting where 
the player should be or what are they going to think or what are they going to do that's going to completely break the game entirely um because you look at everyone online like speedrunners are a great example right they'll take the game as a whole and they will find every single crack that your team spent so much time trying to avoid (laughs) and stitch up and they will break it so um it's only really come to my mind in the past two months really working with epiphany being like these people can actually break the game i need to become somewhat a brainiac and try and determine (laughs) how to like bring them back to ground level yeah definitely so no um so overall yeah no i didn't expect how much psychology went into it yeah it's pretty crazy pretty crazy um and then yeah still on the same topic uh, what kind of projects are you working on at the moment what are you looking at for the future what are you currently working on so at the moment um i've made it a um a goal of mine to reach out to uh different medias uh whether it be uh twitch and and tiktok specifically um i age with a broader audience and try and um, encapsulate um people to try and get into the game dev and share my interests with everyone um so my project at the moment i'm trying to re- wait raise awareness excuse me for um for did um for dissociative identity disorder um there's been a massive stigma in it uh being related to um other things and being misinterpreted um by some medias um it's mainly recognized by the movie split and that's a horrible way of portraying it (laughs) it's um spoken to some people that do have did um they will relay the exact same comment being like we aren't monsters we aren't beasts but these people will come up to us and we will be treated differently so like if there was a way to change people's minds and perspectives so they can learn and change the stigma that would be amazing and so that's what i'm trying to push forward here um and so the basis of that game is you play as a protagonist who does have did and you do go through the experience of learning that you have it and experiencing what it's like to have different alters inside a human body system so yeah that's that's my main project at the moment aside from tiny troopers right now yeah that's really awesome and definitely well needed definitely some good education there for everyone so that's super awesome um well done on that um yeah but i guess if we jump all the way back now we've been through kind of your journey in the industry but if we jump right back to your journey with aie how did that start i know you said it wasn't intentional but how did you get started so um i guess going back to uh the work experience uh journey back in 2015 so back in year 10 it was a requirement for all students to find a workplace to find work experience and i um I was a very studious kid, so I was very focused on my studies and I didn't really have too much time to look, oh, what am I going after this, right? And it wasn't until my dad had introduced me to um, AIE because we saw so much marketing, um, whether it be on buses or on billboards, and yeah. uh, he suggested, just like, look, they're looking for work experience, so why don't you just do it there? And I was just like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take a shot. And... Um, I met Jess, um, the lead for AIE, and she taught me the basics of both, uh, of all elements rather, the programming side, the design side, and the programming, uh, sorry, the, did I say the art side? Did I say the art side? Uh, no, you didn't, but yeah, all three. The <laughs> art side, yeah. Well, the all yeah. three streams, right? And as yeah. well, the visual effects side of things. And I thought, this is really, really cool. Like, I would, like, this is an opportunity that I reckon I can develop a bit more. Um, yeah. But at the time as well, there was a bit of stigma from um, people that I knew and that I brought um, this perspective back to them. And I was like, what do you think? like if i did this what would you think and they'd be like is this a stable opportunity you can really move forward with because at the time game design was still a niche right um 
And then after going to university and learning that I didn't want to do um, war statistics, um, I came back and I saw game design was there. And I had done uh, in the past, and um, it, it was only like very basic stuff. And, um, and I knew I did a little bit of coding, but it wasn't too much to get past. Um, and so when I came to AIE on open day, uh, my portfolio consisted of a lot of that I did in high school, a lot of stories that I made, and it was very um, psychologically based, and my artwork reflected that as well, and that's what made me look in place. Yeah, cool. And we actually have some of your work playing in the background at the moment, so it's probably a bit of a throwback uh, to some of your AIE work as well. It's, um, it's cringy yeah. to look at that right now. Um, <sighs> it, this specifically... Um, Man, my my classmates can relate. This was a very um, destructive time for me back in year one. Um, we called it doing a Mitch, and I would be very <laughs> self-destructive back in year one. And um, I would look on a project, and uh, I would be like, this isn't good enough. And I would start fresh. I would scrap it and do it all again and again and again. And even in oh, this man. playthrough, I can see so many little cracks in it um, <laughs> that I'd be like, I, I just want to get it, I want to fix it. I yeah. make things better now. Um, yeah, but it's nice to be able to see the journey, you know, you came from here to now working at Epiphany. So it's cool to see that maybe you didn't start with all skills and everything that you needed, but now you're definitely up there and doing well. So um, yeah, that brings me to the next thing which would be what kind of things specifically did you bring for the portfolio i know you touched on it a little bit before but for people who are maybe thinking of applying for the same course um the game design and production course um what would you recommend or what did you bring so i had um some writing pieces specifically um short stories um some character dialogue um a lot of writing pieces because majority of game design elements is writing um, and it is usually reflected uh, in documentation that you'll need to do later on when you're writing uh, game design documents or you're writing up plans for the team or anything like that. So writing is number one, making sure that you have the ability to, um, to note take correctly and not only that, develop a story and show that you're strong in uh, developing uh, mechanics and systems. Um, not only that, but if you have a base understanding of art and programming, it doesn't have to be too much. Um, like I said before, my programming language started from Hello World, and that was it, right? Um, it was yeah. bare minimum. But art side, um, it, to show that you know a base fundamental of uh, maybe color theory, whether it be, uh, you know, the, the three main colors, whether it be uh, red, yellow, and blue. Those are your primary. And then um, uh, just the little things like that. Uh, not so much the drawing of it. Yes, you will know need to know how to sketch your ideas down to try to visualize it for some people in team discussions if they learn that way. Um, but it's not, uh, it's not necessary for the end game. What's required okay. is that you, you know what to bring to the table first, because very specifically why I bring that up is, um, it comes into a lot of game development sci uh, psychology, um, which becomes a massive part in, if you were to interact with something, right, it glows yellow. Um, if you were to go to an exit point, you would make it white, so they would go towards it. Or uh, if danger's coming your way, your screen's going to blink red. It's little things yeah. like that. That's really interesting. Things that I never really thought about, but yeah, they're definitely very important. Um, and what would you say is the most important thing that you learned in your time at AIE? Two things stick out of my mind. Um, very very distinctively um first one is always keep notes of your ideas as a designer um we had a saying going through years one and two and it became a massive massive challenge for me to overcome in my major project um the term is harsh but you need to learn how to kill your kids 
um, <laughs> to explain that a little yeah. further. <laughs> Your ideas will be shut down. Um, if there wasn't one time where uh, all ideas were bad and it was it was plain and simple because when you put all your ideas down on a piece of paper it's going to look like complete nonsense but it's only until when you start developing it it becomes a jewel that you'll start you know polish a while so that's the first thing the second thing is networking networking was absolutely crucial to me and without it i don't think um developing gudo or getting to Epiphany Games would have happened if I didn't. Um, from day one, I made it my absolute priority not only to um, become closer with my peers, um, but as well meet the artists, meet the programmers, get to know them a bit better who they are. Because at the end of the day, whether or not we're going to talk to them in campus, we could very well working underneath them in a company in maybe five, ten years' time. Um, so yeah no uh, getting to know everyone networking it's not always about what you do but it's about who you know and i really underestimated that up until i landed epiphany and um my classmates who are landing jobs at half brick at mighty kingdom down in adelaide they are continuously showing me um that networking is so 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 important and i couldn't stress yeah. that enough Definitely, definitely. Uh, Emma, your mic. Emma. Muted. <laughs> I swear, every time. <laughs> I think I think I've got it the opposite way. So when I come in now, it mutes me instead of the other way. Hello. But that's okay. Welcome. Um, so we did have a question that's really building off the whole uh, working with designers and artists. Um, so I wanted to ask whether we had here, I'll put it up on the screen. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So we had Elise, who's actually one of our art students ask, yeah. um, as a designer, what kind of things do you look for in an artist and programmers to make ideal teammates? So it's working with them. So building off what you were just saying before. That's a really awesome question. Um, because when I finished my year one project, um, I was constantly searching for my teammates for year two. Um, and this went for nine months. Nine months uh, we were given this opportunity. And it was only at the last minute did I just scrape in my final um, team members. But to answer the question, um, portfolio and skill set is what's important to a designer. Um, and it also goes off the theme and the concept of the designer's uh, game envisionment. So if you're looking for a 2.5D um, stylized platformer, you're gonna need someone that's ideally got a, a, a strong uh, skill set in Unity and as well um, an artist that knows how to adapt to lighting knowledge um, because lighting in Unity, it's absolutely crucial as I've come to realize. Um, and yeah, no, so it's about finding those people uh, whose skill sets are adjusted to said platform. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank you, Elise, for the question. Are there any more? No, that's just the one for the moment. I'll pop back in at the end, but oh, I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I guess you just touched on 2.5D platformer um so what, what is that exactly so 2.5d platformer um so i guess referring it back to um crash um the first crash well actually no hang on it might be the second crash it's when you <laughs> yeah. see uh, a character move uh from left to right um you could almost say uh like the mario games but so it's a 2d um like flat down but it has some 3d elements behind it uh, so it's almost like the environment's alive behind it okay 
Very interesting. So I wasn't down yeah. with the lingo, but yeah, that's really awesome. And yeah. um, so we were talking about getting in teams of artists, designers and programmers, which you obviously did in first and second year to create the projects, a bit like what we're seeing now. Um, Absolutely. And so you worked on Gudo, which might pop up on the screen as well, um, which was a really awesome game. I have played it. Um, and what was a valuable lesson you took from that project, do you think? Oh, man. Um, I could list a, a page full of stuff <laughs> for Gudo. Um, yeah. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's what's a note from it i guess this idea um it was a manifestation of 25 different ideas combined and i wish i was dramatizing that um <laughs> but that's really what it came down to um every yeah. idea that we pitched it got shut down and gudo had come as our running savior um but what we came to learn of it is to have a concept um, concreted from the beginning. Um, we found through production, we were constantly uh, going back and forth into ideas. We were very ambitious about the project. Um, <laughs> so yeah. with the game being set in three different locations, it was a matter of, okay, what items should be in X, Y, and Z? And um, if this location is this big, how, uh, how long should the gameplay usually go for? Um, and this should have been established back in the alpha stage. It shouldn't have been held in beta stage. Um, so yeah, make sure that you have your concept concreted, ready to go, so you have less troubles to manage down the line is probably cool. the best thing. And what are alpha and beta stages, just for people out there who maybe aren't familiar with the terms? Absolutely. So alpha is uh, the main construction uh, of it. So um, if people um, within the course of studying, this is what we refer as gray boxing, where you just place gray uh, colored objects uh, just to represent what um, you would envision being there. Um, and that's where, uh, artists would produce, um, first pass ads, uh, assets. So it wouldn't have too much detail, but it will show the base shape of what we think it's going to look like. Beta polishes all of that up, um, to make the more aesthetically pleasing look of it. It will be a little bit, uh, buggy, but it will look finished then the alpha stage and then you have gold stage in which everything should be polished in a perfect world um and that's after gold stage where you would release the game yeah awesome um and what would you say is some advice that you would give to someone wanting to get into a similar career i know you talked about networking so that's a really important one would you have any other advice or in i think um in game design specifically, um, designer that came on the live stream before me, his name is Alex. He was a, a student that worked with me at Epiphany before he moved to Heartbreak. Um, he brought up D&D. Um, I only realized after a trip down to Adelaide how much D&D &D, &D, um, <laughs> exposes you to a designer perspective. Because when you yeah. play as the dungeon master, you're constantly creating these journeys and experiences for a player. And that's quite frankly what a game designer is. You're making a player experience. Um, so I would highly recommend if you haven't already, play D&D, get some friends <laughs> together. I know it's hard at the moment, but there are plenty of resources online. Um, I'm currently playing D&D online in my off time as well. And nice. um, it, it's a great opportunity to expand not only um, your skill set in um, creating experiences, but um, becoming a little bit more adept to making ideas on the go. Because in D&D, anything can happen. Anything can change just as a player changes their mind and goes left when your yeah. only options were to go straight. <laughs> Yeah, cool. But yeah. Um, 
Awesome. Yeah, really cool. Hello. Hello. Um, oh, hello. Um, so that's pretty much time. We had some great feedback in the chat from a lot of our Yay. students who are there at the moment. They are really impressed by all of the different things you're doing. And there was a lot of feedback on Gudo saying it was really good as well. So Yay. that's great to think. So we just wanted to say a big thank you for coming on tonight. Like and sharing all your wisdom. It's been awesome and awesome to hear. Um, for anyone who's interested in maybe becoming a designer or they've got any questions or anything like that, uh, we've got our website here, which you can always come to. Um, you can always ask questions on here. You can see all of our courses. So if you're interested in doing what Mitchell did as well, you can see all of our different courses here. Uh, he did the game design and production course. Um, but if you are interested in getting more information, we really recommend coming along to one of our events. We've got our open day coming up uh, in August uh, on the 15th. So fingers crossed Sydney will be out of lockdown and we'll be able to go there. Um, and we've also got online campus day, which is more focusing on the online campus as well. So if you do have any questions or you want to have a bit more of a, a think about like what you're going to do at AIE and all that sort of stuff, come along to one of those days. They're a great opportunity to speak to industry professionals and also teachers and a whole range of different people as well. Um, so yeah, uh, any final words of wisdom, Mitchell? Um, keep following your dreams and <laughs> um, work hard and be nice to people because it pays off. Yes, definitely. Yes, very important, very important. Great words of wisdom. And we just want to say a big congrats to Steph for doing her first live stream. She was amazing Yay. in it. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been great to see all your comments in the chat and um, we really hope you've enjoyed and you've learned some stuff. Tune in next time. Um, I can't remember exactly what we're doing, but I'm sure it'll be another <laughs> great live stream. Uh, and it's, again, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to one of us. We're happy to help with anything. But thank you so much, Mitchell. Uh, and we'll you. see you all next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. See you.